Live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. And welcome back once again to The Cube. We are here live and open in this open source conference, Red Hat Summit 2018, here in Moscone Center in San Francisco. Uh, my name's John Troyer. We are coming to the close to the end of the day three of uh, Red Hat Summit. Been here catching all the live coverage uh, on thecube.net. Uh, great to have with us our two guests here from UPS, uh, Innovation Award winners here at the show. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank so, you. Uh, Thank you. Mark Falto and Dan Severis. So, welcome folks. So, we're, we're going to talk about your journey to using OpenShift how you guys picked it, what, what you guys stood up, and as we were just kind of, I saw you on stage, I saw the on stage uh, story, and as I was just talking to you now before we went live, I was just, I'm just so impressed by the time to market, time to value uh, that you guys were able to achieve, you and your teams, which, you know, if you think about it, is, is really, the fact that that's a real, that's what, this is a real story and it's not just a, uh, you know, a, a marketing example, right, is really great. We live in, 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 sometimes I wake up and I say we're living in wonderful times in 2018. But, <laughs> so, so Dan, kind of set the stage for us. Uh, you are a principal infrastructure architect. You're, on the, you're one of the folks that helped bring the system in. You were already Red Hat Linux uh, yes, users. Um, but like, what were you looking at as you were trying to make this decision and, and what were some of the drivers to bring OpenShift in-house? Well, we knew we wanted to go cloud. We weren't sure whether it was public or private. So we felt that in order to start the transformation to cloud, we should really focus on private. At least boundaries to get that up and running, and uh, a way to get, modernize our applications to be cloud ready. So that was the, that was the, the goal when we set this up. Um, we, we had a very tight timeline. We had applications that wanted to go cloud. So um, we made the Management decision. Management was knocking at the door. Management, everyone was knocking at yeah, the yeah. door, right? So it was a matter of just, you know, what do we want to do? So we, like anything, we reviewed a number of different private cloud solutions and we really liked OpenShift uh, because of its flexibility, its open source capabilities, and the, and the fact that it would provide us uh, Docker containers, which was, which was our container strategy going forward right. that we wanted to use. Was this the beginning of your container strategy? Had you been using them before? No, we haven't been using them before. We just made the decision prior to making the cloud decision that we wanted to go containers and Docker with the containers we wanted to use. Right, so you do, some, you do some sort of evaluation, you say, you know, this seems like something worth happening. Right. You know, in the olden days, we'd go off and you'd do some sort of POC and you'd spend a couple months doing that and then you'd like look at it and they were, you know, what are we, toy projects? Right. Yeah. You guys went into action, so can you talk a little bit about that and the timeline there? Right, so we made the decision in late fall 2016 to do this. Uh, my team is, runs all the infrastructure architecture, so we work with the applications to design new architectures for them. And uh, basically, we started working with Red Hat on success criteria that we established for the product. And then once we got through that, uh, we had uh, started having really uh, sessions with Red Hat and, and using a collaborative DevOps approach with everybody in the organization who would be affected by this private cloud we're putting in. So Mark, our InfoSec folks, our networking folks, right. uh, we were on a very tight timeline. We had an application wanting to go quickly as possible, and they wanted to be up and running in, in like the, the late spring, early yep. summer time frame. Yep. So it didn't give us much time. So a lot of work and effort into uh, figuring out how we wanted our architects uh, OpenShift for not only to be operationally successful for us, but from an application perspective. You know, so it was important that we do this in a collaborative manner yep. and get everybody's input in doing that. Yeah, that's, that's something that's going to be interesting to dip into, right? Because, uh, you know, the speed, you can't just turn on speed like that. Uh, as I've been kind of jokingly referring to, right? You, you have to turn into kind of a DevOps and an agile organization, even at the infrastructure layer. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. So Mark, so, you know, within a few months, you've got OpenShift up and running. Now yes. you've got to put some apps on it. Um, yeah. you're, uh, these are net new apps. You have, you have all your existing portfolio still having right. to run. Right. But so, yeah, what were you looking at uh, putting up there and kind of how did you approach that yeah. in, in terms of a yeah. cloud native practice? Our strategy was to, to take net new applications. We were trying to find uh, app teams that we thought had uh, at least a sophisticated enough process that they could, they could take on the automation that we really wanted to drive with the platform as well, right? It was not just containerization, but but the transformation of in dev process that came with that, right? So it's, it's get a pipeline in place, understand how to use Jenkins, how to use the, you know, the plugins that are necessary to make that happen. So we, you need the right app teams that are ready to take that on. Um, so 
we had we had an example application with as part of our uh, edge initiative uh, called Sype, which uh, that that team with we thought was ready to take this on. It met it was the only way we were really going to meet their timelines too. Uh, so we went, worked with them for a number of weeks, and not just us, but we also had Red Hat partners helping us too um, to really build out the automation for them, pipelines, get everything an example running for their complete. Uh, automated pipeline. Right, and so this this kind of this kind of app can you describe a little bit what it does? It's a little bit of a it's a business line app to help to managers make some, do some decision making it, and yeah, some planning. Yeah, it's, it's a decision assistance uh, application for uh, for supervisors at at hub facilities where you know where you move packages. Okay, so real business impact before yeah. they had I don't know what they were they were either Most papers of it was or manual or, processes yeah. and yeah. it wasn't it wasn't like the speed to market. It was the information wasn't real time. So Sype was all about driving real-time decisions in the field. Right. right, right, so it must have had an immediate impact then. So you, it sounds like you were up, and then also within a few months. Of, in, in, yes, in yeah, yeah, it, we can, I mean, <laughs> we were able to get at least a pipeline going uh, within weeks for them, and uh, that, that, that demonstrates the capacity to get yourself to production, right? And then, then they're in production, you know, within a, a number of months after that, a couple months after that. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. great. And I'm assuming you've been be able to uh, revise it and kind of improve the functionality since, and th that and some yep. other apps. Yep. Yeah. Was that a big shift for you and your developers to kind of come up, to kind of get to this stance of, uh, of of frequent releases and 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 a pipeline? Yeah, yeah. It's a huge uh, process shift. It's a cultural shift for app teams. They have to they have more capability from the infrastructure than they've ever had before. Uh, so. You know, we, we we they now have tools to deliver much faster than they're used to. So it, there's, they change their team structures to help us facilitate that. They bring in Red Hat or other you know consultants to help them, uh, you know, backfill their skill sets. So it's. Big, big transformation, yeah. Nice, nice. Now, I wanted to explore a little bit, uh, one word you hear a lot here, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, you've been hearing that, we've been hearing that a lot this week. This particular app runs on-prem, right? Runs so, on-prem, yes. Yep. Yeah, and uh, let's make sure we get right, on-premises. On-premises, well, right. It runs you. actually <laughs> between two data centers. Yeah, I get extra bonus points for that. <laughs> um, but as a portfolio, uh, that you have to manage your IT department and infrastructure. You act, UPS does take advantage of different clouds and different code running in different places, as, as well as SaaS and everything else. I'm sure. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the portfolio? Sure. So we have both. We have a wide variety. As, as companies large as UPS, you can imagine we have a lot of IT solutions. So we, and we leverage all of them to our you know to our benefits. So we have PaaS solutions in the cloud. A lot of analytics stuff we'll do out there. And we also have a lot of SaaS solutions that we use to do different various works across our organization. So we, you know, we are using cloud in multiple ways. Uh, our next journey is hybrid cloud. How do we do that? How do we take OpenShift now? Because what we have is a situation where we need a lot of processing power for what we call our peak season, right. Christmas of course, right? So, but when we size today on on-prem, we size for that peak season. So the challenge for us now is how can we use on-prem for say nine months out of the year, then expand into the cloud for peak season, yeah. reduce costs, and then drop that environment down after we're done with peak season yeah. to really you know, drive us really efficiently from a cost perspective. Right, right, right. And obviously, OpenShift uh, is going to be a probably key element to that. It is a key element. element. It is a key yeah. element. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this only took a, this, this journey was, um, you know, if you just look at the, at, at the timeline we just talked about, really only a few months. And do you really, it, it seems like this was kind of a corner turn for your engineering organization. I mean, is that, uh, is, is that a, an accurate uh, no, I, I would, representation? I would say so, both from yeah. an infrastructure yeah. perspective. The biggest thing when you run a common environment, which we do in OpenShift, in other common environments, you have no control over how the applications affect one another. With, for us, we, what we like about OpenShift, it gives us that capability so application A doesn't step on application B. And I think for us, it, it just made our lives a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, from an operational perspective for that reason. Right, it wasn't about the tool, but the tool helped enable the processes and then that, that, that yeah. yielded the time to market and time yeah, to value. Right. Yeah, and from an app side, I mean, we, we building these new architectures really requires containerization, requires the automation. So we can't, we can't attack you know, the proper microservice patterns and practices without, really without OpenShift as a platform underneath. It's, it's, it's foundational, and, yeah. And I think I'd like to stress the fact that it, it, it really was, all of us knew we had to get something done. 
and we all came together. There was no, there was no, the, the silos were immediately broken down. We knew we had a mission to get through, we knew we had something to get done in a short period of time, and we just came together in such a strong, collaborative way uh, of driving the solution. Oh, that's great, and congratulations. Uh, Innovation Award here at the show. Uh, it's been a great week here at uh, Red Hat Summit. So, uh, Mark Falto, Dan Savarese from, from uh, UPS, yep. uh, congrats and, and thanks for being thank here you. on theCUBE. Well, thank, thank you, you, John. All right, well we are here live in San Francisco. We are uh, finishing up day three. We'll be back after a short break in all of our live coverage of Red Hat Summit on theCUBE. <laughs>